This episode of Tour the World is brought to you by Evergreen Tours, a world of discovery, and Antler, the champions of lightweight luggage. G'day there and welcome to Tour the World. Real people, real travel experiences. Now, we join Aussie tour groups traveling to some of the world's most exciting destinations. And this week, part one of an extraordinary journey around Southern Africa and Victoria Falls with Evergreen Tours. Now, Africa is a once in a lifetime destination. I can't wait, so let's get underway. The big five for this week experience traditional village life in Victoria Falls. Dine out under the stars in an African lapa. Explore the historic Cape of Good Hope. Shop up a storm at the V&A waterfront in Cape Town. And meet Africa's big five in Addo Elephant National Park. This incredible tour gets underway in Cape Town, heading along the garden route to Neisner. We travel inland to the fabulous Addo Elephant Park. Then on to Port Elizabeth, Durban and spectacular Cathedral Peak in the Drakensberg. We pass through Swaziland before our two-night stay on the edge of the Kruger National Park. It's on to the Blader River Canyon, then a flight to Zimbabwe and the incomparable Victoria Falls. Southern Africa is extraordinary. It's the destination that really does offer something for everyone. Marvel at the majesty of this incredible part of the world. From spectacular natural landscapes to dynamic cultural centres. Rich in history, sights, sounds and tastes. The traditional African way of life is alive and well too. Evergreen Tours offers a deluxe style of touring with all the key sites included along the way. The food is fabulous and there are plenty of opportunities to try some delicious local specialties and some very fine wines. With a new spirit of cooperation in the air, there's never been a better time to visit the Rainbow Nation. And we're on tour, so I suspect we're going to need a tour guide. What's the best part of being a tour guide? Well, I'm passionate about South Africa and uh, it's great to be able to share that with new people all the time and uh, make them aware of the miracle that this country is and it is a miracle. What's your favourite part of this tour? No question, Kruger. Kruger National Park, just my favourite spot in Africa. It's real Africa, it's bush Africa, it's acacia trees and and the big five, all the magnificent game of Africa. What's the best time to visit Africa to see the wildlife? Right now, you're here at the right time. It's winter here in Cape Town, so it's the rainy time in Cape Town, but up there, it's dry season. Um, so the bush is thin, visibility is great. Time to take a look at a few of the basics. I love hotels that add to the travel experience. It's so important. And that's exactly what they do on this tour. Every hotel has been carefully selected, not only for its location, comfort and level of service, but also its ambience and what it brings to this incredible travel experience. Hi, good day. Welcome to Proto Hotel Mars Lakeith and I hope you guys have a good stay with us. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to report we have a great stay everywhere we go. Now, all the hotels on this tour are excellent. They're all of a deluxe standard, including the fabulous Kazuko Lodge on the edge of the Addo Elephant National Park. This place is amazing. It's a little bit of five-star safari chic. The Addo Elephant National Park and Kazuko Lodge are located about three hours' drive from the coast in the province of Eastern Cape. And it's our first taste of the real African bush. We board safari vehicles for the final leg of our journey to the lodge for our wonderful two-night stay. Now, this really is something special. The lodge is perfectly integrated into the natural surrounds of the National Park. 
It also has its own private game reserve. Now, the individual standalone chalets are just fabulous with their thatched roofs and contemporary interiors. On arrival, we're served up a delicious hot chocolate to warm the cockles and the sumptuous Karoo high tea is served every afternoon at three. I could very easily get used to this. Travelling by road in Southern Africa is smooth and efficient. The highways are excellent and our comfortable air-conditioned coach makes short work of some of the bigger drives involved. The vistas are constantly changing from the lush fertile plains of the garden route in the south to the more arid landscapes in the north. I'm travelling with about 20 fellow Aussies and towards the end of our tour I catch up with some of my fellow tourists to find out why they decided on a trip to Africa and what they love most about travel. I really came on this trip because my friend rang and said on my bucket list I have to go to South Africa and I thought if anyone asks me to go anywhere I'll go. As far as I can tell it's a very, very safe place to come to. What I love about travelling is just the fact that you go to a, a, another country, there's the culture, the language barrier sometimes, different money. It's just a brand new experience. It's an adventure. Well, the good news is the adventure has only just begun. Now, there's no doubt that visiting South Africa's amazing wild spaces is a highlight of this tour. There are over 300 national parks, reserves and protected areas like Addo to explore, and many of them are home to the Big Five, who we'll catch up with a little later on. But right now, let's kick things off in the Table Mountain National Park. This is quite spectacular. Our day trip begins with a leisurely drive from Cape Town down the stunning Cape Peninsula through the Table Mountain National Park. It's a little different to the other parks we'll see on this tour. Its main purpose is to protect plants, not animals. The World Heritage listed Cape Floral Kingdom around Cape Point has over 9,000 species of flora. The Flying Dutchman takes us up to the top of Cape Point for the sweeping views across the legendary Cape of Good Hope and the South Atlantic Ocean. Now, contrary to popular belief, this is not the southernmost tip of Africa. That honour goes to Cape Agullis, but it is an amazing stretch of coastline which must have awed those early explorers. Our drive continues around the rocky windswept coastline towards Boulders Beach to meet some of the Cape's residents, a colony of plucky African penguins. Now it's time to meet some of our distant relatives. Now, there is some monkey business going on today on the tour. We are at the Monkey Lands Primate Sanctuary. There are 10 species of monkey, lemur and ape to meet, including one of just three monkeys native to South Africa, the vervet, and they are very, very naughty. Monkey Land on the Garden Route is a sanctuary for displaced primates and it's teeming with small furry characters. We catch up with Ranger Lara to find out more. The whole concept was to let monkeys have a space where they could be monkeys. You know, where they could choose their own lovers and you know, raise their own kids and not be traded with. The process will differ from, obviously if it's a pet monkey, it will take a bit longer because we have to rehabilitate you back into your wild estate. Uh, zoo monkeys rehabilitate much easier because there is not so much hands-on. And uh, lab monkey, it depends really on what kind of trauma the animal went through. Not sure if you um, saw some mating behavior today because it is baby making time. And um, the Capuchin females are extremely flirtatious at the moment and they'll you know, uh, raise their eyelids. They've got these beautiful white bits on the tops of their eyes. So they sort of flutter their eyes at the boys and stroke their bellies to look sexy. <laughs> well, I can tell you there's plenty of cheeky behavior on display from this lot. And hang on to your cameras, hats and handbags. These guys are lightning fast if something takes their fancy. Hey, you two, behave. Oh, it's all too embarrassing. So it's about 6am 
and it's about six degrees, so it's pretty chilly. And we're off this morning on our first game drive here in the Addo National Park, hopefully to see the first of the big five, the African elephant. So I've got my fingers crossed, I've got my toes crossed, I've got pretty much everything crossed. Let's go. Well, this is what we've all been waiting for and our first game drive does not disappoint. As we all agree, it's quite an extraordinary experience. The experience was fantastic. So unexpected in a way. You see animals in zoos, but it's not the same. I had a sense that I was part of it. The vehicle that we went around in, the drivers were fantastic. They backed off several times to show us something they thought may have been there. I'd love to come back. As I was saying to one of the blokes the other day, we'd like to stay here. That's what we think of it. And I always think that's the sign of a good holiday when you say, I could live here. Yeah. I think that's great. It's been a fabulous holiday. With the buffalo crossed off our list, we get a call on the radio to report a sighting of another of the big five. Two of the park's resident male lions sleeping off a recent kill. We're able to get incredibly close to the magnificent cats, both around 10 years old. On the road again, and it's not long before we spot an elephant across a distant ravine. But somehow at 6,000 kilograms, he manages to elude us. Not so the world's fastest runner, the cheetah. There are two within Kazuko's game reserve with tracking collars to monitor their location. Our guide Xander points out some of the finer details when tracking an elephant, but the day is drawing to a close and still no luck. Then suddenly our first African elephant in the wild. It's an incredible sight, a herd of about eight of the gentle giants. But good things also come in small packages. A sighting of the extremely elusive Ardwolf ends our fabulous day. Our tour starts in cosmopolitan Cape Town, our first taste of Southern African culture. The spectacular Mother City is an incredible place, a compact mix of Dutch colonial buildings, Georgian mansions and bustling civic squares. First stop, the must-see Bow Cap, the colourful Malay quarter where Muslim slaves bought from the East Indies later settled as free men after the abolition of slavery in the Cape in the early 1830s. The free men painted their homes all the colours of the rainbow as a reminder of their heritage. The rejuvenated Victoria and Alfred waterfront is also a must-see with its plethora of designer boutiques, restaurants and cafes. The precinct is named after Queen Victoria's son Alfred rather than her husband Albert. Alfred initiated the construction of the first breakwater in Table Bay in 1860. The v &A waterfront is a wonderful place for a stroll and to watch the working harbour in action. The nautical theme continues in the picturesque resort town of Neisner on the Garden Route. And with a two-night stay here, there's plenty of free time to soak up some sunshine on the magnificent Neisner Keys boardwalk. With its temperate year-round climate, this town is very popular with tourists. And there are plenty of ways to explore the magnificent Neisner Lagoon. Now there are lots of opportunities to experience traditional African culture on this tour, but one of my favourites is this visit to a local village outside Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe. We spend an amazing couple of hours here, and I can't help but think with all our material wealth, sometimes we need to stop and think about what's really important. How would you like to win an amazing touring package? Well, here's your chance from Tour the World. This fabulous prize includes a $1,000 voucher towards a tour for two people from Evergreen Tours, a world of discovery. A stylish set of three drive light luggage cases from Antler, the champions of lightweight luggage. 
a selection of Go Travel products to help you get the most from your travel experience, and a men's holiday wardrobe to the value of $500 from Uberman. Contemporary urban looks and uncompromising quality. Just tell us in 25 words or less where you'd like to tour to and why. Visit tourtheworld.com.au. The Rainbow Nation offers a mouthwatering menagerie of local cuisine to enjoy during this tour. The food is exceptional with all of your breakfasts and several dinners included along the way, like this fabulous lapa or feast under the stars. It's fresh and it's fun. There are lots of wonderful dining experiences on this tour. South Africa is a meat-loving nation and while there's plenty of fresh salad and seafood on offer, expect to see some local specialties such as springbok, kudu and even warthog on the menu. But often it's not just the food that's fabulous. We saw that amazing African dance display. Oh, wasn't that a bonus? Wasn't hey? it fabulous? Oh, it was great. Just, ex just describe it for me. Oh, look, it was so full of energy and fun and, and laughter. And I was dying to get out there and join them. Well, I saw <laughs> you. You did get out there and I have know a little I go. did. Only when we were all invited to go. Are you game to show me your little move from the dance? As I saw you, you were having a bit of a dance. Oh, I was having a great I'll time. I'll do it as well. All right. You ready? I think you're right. Like We've got to get out. A little bit of that. <laughs> a little bit of that and a little bit of the hips going, yeah. Weren't they amazing? Oh, they were amazing. I mean, how can you not get up and dance to that? And we all enjoy these rhythms as we have done for thousands of years. Wherever we go, we're served up something special, like this included welcome lunch at the Black Marlin restaurant on the Cape Peninsula. It tastes as good as it looks. And here's an idea for your free night in Cape Town. Now, one of the great joys of travelling is, of course, trying local cuisine. And the fabulous Africa Cafe in Cape Town is a one-stop shop for regional dishes across Africa. From African cuisine, you can definitely expect a lot of variety. We love using vegetables and spice as well. We love our chilies because we like to keep our dishes nice, warm hot and spicy. And of course here at the Africa Cafe, people can come and experience dishes from a wide range of areas across Africa. Definitely. Tell me what you've got here for us tonight because it looks amazing. Thank you. From Congo, you have spinach. It's spinach cooked with tomatoes, peppers and onion. From Egypt, you have koshri. It's your layers of noodles, chickpeas and lentils topped in a rich garlicky tomato gravy. From Ghana, you have chicken groundnut stew. Those are your chicken thighs in a rich groundnut sauce. Moving on, we have typical Southern African dish, cassava bread. What you find there is your tapioca bread. It's baked in yogurt and cheese. Now my own favorite will be your Kosa Imifino patties. I'm proudly Kosa. And I love that one. And that's one dish that my grandma used to prepare for us. Wow. It will be your maize meal patties mixed with some spinach, cooked in a nice traditional pot, and voila. And we get the chance to try some traditional Zimbabwean tucker at the home of a local family in Victoria Falls. Our host explains some of the traditions practiced during mealtime, including hand washing at the table. There are dried kapenta, small salted sardines, and mapani worms for starters. The sardines are a particularly tasty little snack. 
Then we enjoy a delicious meal of stewed chicken, beef, vegetables and a maize porridge known as sadza, rolled into balls and used to sop up the gravy, meat and veggies by hand. And yes, I was game to try a mapani. Now, if you think this tour ticks all the boxes on your holiday checklist, then call Evergreen Tours or go online to evergreentours.com. For more episodes of Tour the World, visit our website or track us down on Facebook. Well, that is all we have time for in part one. So we'll say farewell from the amazing Kazuko Lodge here in the Addo Elephant Park. Now, next week, Kruger National Park and, of course, spectacular Victoria Falls. I can't wait. We'll see you then. Thank you.